Okay, so now I'm going to have a go at the next task in exercise one of the Codility exercises. It's called Slalom Skiing. It's a hard task, so let's get straight into it. Okay, you're a skier participating in a giant slalom. The slalom track is located on a ski slope. It goes downhill and is fenced by barriers on both sides. The barriers are perpendicular to the starting line located at the top of the slope. There are N slalom gates on the track. Each gate is placed at a distance, at a distinct distance from the starting line and from the barrier on the right hand side. You start from any place on the starting line, ski down the track, passing as many gates as possible and finish the slalom at the bottom of the slope. Passing a gate means skiing through the position of the gate. You can ski downhill in either of two directions, to the left or to the right. When you ski to the left, you pass gates of increasing distances from the right barrier and when you ski to the right, you pass gates of decreasing distances from the right barrier. You want to ski to the left at the beginning. Unfortunately, changing direction is exhausting. So you have decided you'll change direction at most two times during your ride. Because of this, you've allowed yourself to miss some of the gates on the way down the slope. You'd like to know the maximum number of gates that you can pass with at most two changes of direction. The arrangement of gates is given as an array consisting of n integers whose elements specify the positions of the gates at the distance of k plus 1 from the starting line and the distance of a k from the right barrier. Okay, so for example, consider this array here and here is what it represents. So A0 is zero distance from the starting line and the position is 15 from the right barrier. A1 is 13, A2 is 5. Okay, and then five, seven, four, ten, twelve. Okay, that makes sense. The picture above illustrates the example track and a course that passes eight gates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You ski after starting, you ski to the left. So this is the right, so we're starting here, so left is this way. You pass gates 2, 3, 5, 6, change direction and pass 7 and 8, change direction and pass 10 and 11, and finish the slalom. There is no possible way of passing more gates using at most two changes of direction. Okay. Write a function that given the array returns the maximum number of gates that you can pass during one ski run. Given the above data, the function should return eight for the following array, one, five, the function should return two. Fair enough. Write an efficient algorithm for n, that's the number of gates being within the range of 1 and 100,000. Each element of array A is an integer within the array of 1 and a billion. And all elements of A are distinct. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is uh, really a longest ascending subsequence sort of problem. Uh, so to begin with, I'm going to forget about the doubling back. I'm just going to find a way to get the longest increasing subsequence in a set. So in this example here, uh, we would want, we would probably be able to find four 
by just going in one direction so for example the two three five six so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each point in turn and uh, we're moving forward going down the picture so I'm going to look back at what I've seen so far and see the closest one to the left of the one that I'm looking at uh, adding one onto the number of steps that's taken to get to that one so for example the zero here the first step that would be our first step so if we were if we were to start uh, from the left and go to the right of this picture that would be the first one that we could see this one here again that would be the first one because there's nothing to the left this one here would be one as well because there's nothing to the left and this one here we can see that the closest one to the left is this two the closest one that we've seen so far so that would be one plus one is two then four there's nothing to the left so that's one five we've got a two to the left so that's three six we've got a three to the left so that's four seven to the left we've got a two so that would be three eight would be one nine would be four ten going to the left we've only got a one so far so that would be two eleven we've got a three four and twelve one is two so we can see we've got three different ones that we could finish on going from the left to the right so we could go two three five six we could also go two three seven nine two three seven eleven okay there's a problem with this though and the problem is if we imagine a sequence 10 11 12 13 3 and 12 so what that would look like is 10 might be there for example 11 is to the right of it and then we've got 1 2 3 and 12 uh, I'll just put it in a different color okay so if we were going to the left as we did before this one would be one this one would be one and then two this one over here would be one this one would be two this one would be three and then this one we would look to the left and see two and we would go three um, that of course is not right because we could go we could take this path where we come down here and that could be four where we're going to get out of that is if we've seen a point before with the number of steps that we're considering at a higher position than what we're at now we'll delete that higher position um, so in other words we have one here then we have two there then we start here we have one we look back over the list and we see we've seen a one before so get rid of it then here we have two look back over the list we've seen a two before and it's at a high position so get rid of it then we see three and then we see four so that's the way I'm going to go about finding the highest subsequence and then after that we'll think about the doubling pack okay so I'm going to prepare my class and the class for the time being is just going to get the ascending subsequence and I'm going to try out that sequence that we just looked at 10 11 1 2 3 12 okay so there's the sequence 10 11 1 2 3 12 and we're going to want to see the answer for okay so I'm going to make a tree map 
and this is going to have an integer as a key and an integer of the value and we'll call it flag steps. Now the first integer, the key is going to represent the position of the flag across the um, f f from from the edge of the of the ski slope the position of the flag and the second value the value in the tree map is going to represent the number of steps and flag steps is going to hold all of the flags that we've seen so far so I'm going to loop through a and I'm going to try and get an entry out of the tree map lower entry so out of the flags that we've seen so far I'm going to try and get one level to the left from the current level that we're at the level across and then the steps to get to this flag if the lower entry is null then the steps to get to it will be one otherwise the steps to get to it will be the steps to get to the previous one plus one and then I'm going to put that value into this flag and at the start I'm going to save a variable max steps equals zero and then here I'll say max steps equals the maximum of what it currently is and the steps that we have here and I'll return max steps so what I've done there is what we originally did in this diagram but without crossing it out so we had one two one two three and then this one look back at there and got three so it should find the answer three here so let's run that and see three that's right okay so the crossing out bit of it in order to do that i'm going to make uh into a i call it step step flags i'm going to initialize this A length plus one and plus one because I'm going this is going to be each point on this array is going to represent a number that we could find on this diagram so these numbers one two three <laughs> so I'm going to remember one the at position one in the array I'm going to remember the flag the position of the flag on the diagram and then I'll be able to look back at that list and see if we have, if we're at steps one, for example, I'll look at position one in the array and I'll see if the value already in there is higher than the value that we're at now, then I'll get rid of that flag in the flag steps tree map. And then I'll put this value into the array and I'll carry on like that so that should mean that we'll end up crossing out this flag and that flag and then when this one looks back at that one it will be four okay so this array will initialize to all zeros so here once we've got the number of steps I'm going to say int prev flag that's previous flag for this number of steps step flags get the, the value at the number of steps I did plus one in the array because I'm going to count position one as one instead of zero and then here I say if previous flag position is greater than a which is the position of the flag that we're now looking at then flag steps remove previous flag
So it said that we'll remove the previous flag. The key of flag steps is, is the position. And then after all this, we'll just save the step flags steps equals A. So we'll save the position of this flag into step flags. Okay, so now if we run it, we'll hopefully get four. Four, that's right. So let's just debug through that and make sure it's working. I'll just debug very quickly. So we start off with zero flags, zero max steps, and our step flags array is initialized to zero. Okay, we look at flag in position 10. We can get to it in one step because there's no lower entry. And we haven't seen a value at this number of steps before. So we got nothing to remove. We put position 10 we can get to it in one step into a flag step survey and we save position 10 into step 1 max steps equals 1 then we look at our next flag which is position 11 the lower entry is 10 and one step so this one is two steps we've not seen a previous flag at two steps so we don't do anything there. Well, we put our value 11 at two steps into our flag step survey. And we save two steps to position 11. Our max steps is now two. Now we look at one. We've got no lower entry. Previously though, at one we had position 10, which is greater than the current position. So we're going to remove the 10 one from the flag steps array and put in one at one. And we'll save one at flag steps one, step flags one. Max steps stays at two. Then we look at two. We've got a lower entry of one. Previous flag at this number of steps is 11 that's greater than 2 so we remove the 11 from the flag step survey and we put in 2 and we save 2 there and then max step stays at 2 then we look at 3 this should go through and get 3 at 3 max steps is now three and then we get the next one which is at position 12 the lower entry is three now so we've forgotten about the two at 10 and 11 steps to this one is four we've got no previous flag and we put four position 12 at four into flag steps max steps is four and we return max steps okay now i'm going to put in the answer or put in the exercise question and we, we can think about doubling back Okay, so that's the uh, the flags positioned in the question. So now let's have a think about doubling back. Okay, so we've done the subsequence thing and we should be able to get a subsequence out of this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three courses next to each other and this second one I'm going to flip horizontally okay 
So now if we get the subsequence from this, um, it's as if we're doubling back, but we've got the jump over from six to six and the jump over from eight to eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this one first and consider this one last. So now what we're going to do is take the course. We want to take this course through the way. So we go two, three, five, six, jump across to seven and eight and jump across to 10 and 11. So if we have these three arrays next to each other, we can just use the ascending subsequence algorithm to find our way through with two double doublings back. So let's have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is get the body of this method and put it into another method. I'm going to call it get steps, get steps at A. I'm going to take that logic, put it in there and return steps from the get steps method. So in other words, we're looking at a flag and we're going to get the number of steps to get to that flag. So what I'm going to do here, uh, it would be get steps at flag A and that is refactored but the effect should be the same we still get four now what i'm going to do is this in three steps firstly looking at that diagram the first step is going to be this part of the diagram and then this part and then this part and because we're doing this first we can't jump from one diagram to the next because we're in an integer with two Two and oh, just over two and a half billion as the range, and in the exercise question, it says that the maximum value of a flag, the maximum distance of a flag to the right barrier, is going to be one billion. What I'm going to do to put this first course over to the right, I'm going to add one billion and one to a. And then the next time we want to do a reverse image, I'm going to say 1 billion minus A to do the one in the middle. And finally, I'm going to do minus 1 billion and 1 plus A for our course on the left. So what we've really done there, the X coordinate here is 1 billion. X coordinate here is zero, so and the coordinate here is minus one billion. So the points here are one billion and one, just to keep it apart, plus the values here. The coordinates here are one billion and one minus, so that minus gives it the mirror image, and the coordinates here are minus one billion plus. And then doing that, we should be able to work through our course, doubling back twice, finding the longest consecutive sequence. And the answer is eight. And looking back at the question, that is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that was uh, challenging, um, but that's my solution. I'm going to submit it and see how it does. I just need to import the tree map and the map entry. Okay. 
Okay, let's submit that. Okay, and 100%. So that was a challenging one. Um, I didn't manage to do it first time. It did take me some time to work that one out. Uh, but that's my solution to slalom skiing on Codility. Thanks for watching.